You are now watching Archangel Apostolic Assembly. Amen. God bless all of y'all. Luke chapter 8. Yeah, yeah. Luke chapter 8, verse 46. If you have it, say amen. 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 If you don't have it, say Lord help me. <laughs> amen, amen. Luke chapter 8, verse 46. I just want to read this first, the first half of this verse. Luke chapter 8, verse 46. And we all can read together. And Jesus said, somebody had touched me. Amen. Read it one more time before I hear it. And Jesus said, somebody had touched me. Amen. You all may be seated. Amen. Amen. If I could preach from the topic on today, the topic would be, I touched him. I touched him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The ageless question that has been asked for so many years and through so many generations, amen, is do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Amen. The question is how we get a feel of people in, and how we get a feel of their understanding of who God is and what God does. We, we may ask them, do you know Jesus? Amen. I'm sure all of us have been asked at one point in time of our life, do we know Jesus? Yeah. Amen. And the, the question is so common that oftentimes people respond, with the first thing that comes to their mind. Amen. Nobody wants to be embarrassed and nobody wants to be looked at as a person who does not know Jesus. Yeah. Amen. So the first thing we say is, yes, I know him. Yeah. I know the man. I know Jesus. I know him. Do you know Jesus? Yes, I know him. I know him. Amen. It's a question that's sometimes taken so lightly and we give it such a quick response. Amen. It's possible. It's possible. To, it's impossible to say that you know Jesus. Unless you've had some experience with them, amen? It's impossible to say that you know somebody and you have not had an encounter with them. It's impossible to say that you have a relationship, amen, you have not made an agreement with that person, amen? You have to, you have, to have an experience to be able or able to say that you know Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. You have to have an experience. Amen. You can't keep riding, amen, on others' testimonies. Yeah. Amen. You can't keep riding, amen, on the prayers of your mother and father and of the prayers of the pastor and of the prayers of the prayer warriors. Amen. You have to get a relationship with God for yourself. Somebody amen. say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. You have to know Jesus. You have to have an experience because an experience, amen, holds power. An experience, amen, is something that goes beyond just telling you. Amen. An experience is something that not only only I can tell you about, but I'm convinced of it in my own heart. Amen. An experience. Amen. We've got to have an experience. We look at the disciples. Amen. And we think about, we think about how mighty men that they are. We look at Peter, James, John. We say they were mighty men and they were courageous. They carried the gospel to the whole world. Amen. We look at Paul. And we tell the story all the time about when we say he was a, a murderer and amen. God turned him into a missionary. An evangelist, an apostle. Amen. We look at those men and we, we say that they're mighty men of God. Amen. But we, if we can look at their track record, we'll see that they even had doubts about Jesus. We can look and see that they had doubts about who God was. Yeah. Amen. Even John the Baptist. Amen. He had a moment of doubt. Uh -huh. While he was in the prison. Amen. He was in prison and he wanted to know if Jesus was the right person. Yeah. He said, are you the one or should we look for another? Yeah. Amen. He sent two men to go out and ask, are you the one or should we look for another? Amen. We have to be careful as saints. We have to be careful. Amen. Because even though somebody is in bondage, amen, they're always looking and wondering, is the one that we got the one that they need? Amen. And even if they're in bondage and, and locked up themselves, they'll, they'll send people to ask you and they'll, they'll send you messages and call you and ask you, amen, is the person you got the same person that I serve. Amen. What is it about the man that you got, amen, that I don't got? Amen. What is it about Jesus that I have not come to grasp behold of him yet? It's something about, amen, of experience with God. Amen. When people ask you about who he is, you can tell them, amen, you can stand flat footed and declare, amen, I know a man who can save from sin. You can stand bold and declare, I know a man who can take you out of the muck and the mire. I know a man who can take you, amen, out of all of your sin and situations. 
possessions and put you upon solid ground. Somebody say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for an experience. I thank you. Amen. I thank you. Amen. John the Baptist. Amen. John the Baptist, he had, he had an encounter with God when Jesus, we all know the story, when Jesus walked on the scene and he saw him and he said, this man, I'm not even worthy. Amen. To latch his shoes. Amen. He was humbled when he saw Jesus. He had an encounter with God, but amen, he had a moment of doubt when he said, are you the one? Are you the one that God has sent? Amen. To restore Israel. Are you the one that God has sent to be a king? Amen. A ruler of the Jews. Amen. So we had this moment of doubt. Amen. I come to tell you, amen, that you can see sometimes what God is doing, but it's another level when you got an experience with him. You can see the things that God are doing, but it's another thing when God is doing it in your life. Amen. Amen. You can look around and see everybody testifying and shouting, but it doesn't become real to you until you get God to do it for you. Amen. Say, Lord, do it for me. Hallelujah. It doesn't become real until you have that experience. Amen. Until you held his hand, until you walk with him, until you've spoken with him, until he's answered a few of your prayers. Anybody know God to still be a prayer answerer? Amen. I'm glad I don't serve a God who does this quiet. I don't, I'm glad I don't serve a God who won't talk to you. I'm glad I serve a God who can hear you in the midnight hour. Anybody got experience with God? Anybody got a prayer life? Anybody know that when you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. When you call on him, he'll be right there to comfort and to keep you. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Amen. If we look, amen, in Matthew chapter 11, amen, and we'll see in verse 27, we see that it says that all things were delivered unto me of my father. This is Jesus now. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the father. Amen. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever God the son will reveal him. Amen. Amen. No man knows the father except the son shall reveal him to him. Amen. It doesn't matter how much we explain Jesus to people. The only way that they gonna understand if they have an encounter with him. The only way they gonna understand if they call upon him for themselves. Amen. We can tell them time and time again who he is and, and what he does and how he saves. Amen. But it's important that you tell them that no matter how much I'm preaching to you, you need to come and get a touch from God. No matter how many scriptures I quote to you, it's important that you believe in have your experience with God. Somebody say hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You have to have a revelation. You have to have a revelation. It says the Son will reveal him. A revelation. Revelation. When you think about that word revelation, amen, the world that we live in is calling the church, amen, to be revelant, and we're missing out on revelation. Amen. We're calling the church to fit into the world. We're calling, they're calling the the church to, to, to try to please the crowd and try to get everybody in, get as many people as we can to come and, and pay tithes and pay offering. They're trying to be relevant. They're trying to get people to be on their good side and they don't want anybody to talk bad about them. They don't want to offend anybody or make anybody mad with the word. Amen. They're trying to make it relevant. Amen. But I come to the conclusion that all you need is revelation. Amen. Because if you tell people that you get a revelation, amen, revelation Revelation causes you to change because when you get a revelation, it puts you in on the mindset of God. When you get a revelation, it puts you in on how God feels about things. When you get a revelation, amen, it causes you to shift from one point to another. So what we need is not relevancy. We need revelation. We need revelation of who God is. We need revelation that he's a restorer. We need revelation that he's a mind changer. We don't need no more life and chandeliers. What we need is a revelation of who God is. Because when you get the revelation, you get an understanding of how God wants you to do it. Sometimes we ought to just ask God, Lord, give me your heart. Lord, give me your mind. Lord, give me your understanding so that I can walk like you want me to walk. I don't want to be popular, but I do want to be a praiser. I don't want to be popular, but I do want to be a, have a revelation and an understanding of who you are. So Somebody say revelation, revelation, revelation. Relevant says that God 
has to change some things. I don't know about you, but I don't serve a God that changes with the ages. I serve a God that says he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I serve a God that says he's God and I change not. You might try to add some things to him, but he said I'm not changing. You might try to put your own spin on it, but he said I'm not changing. I'm the same God today that I was yesterday. I'm the same God for you that I was for Moses. I'm the same deliverer that I was for Joshua in the battle of Jericho. Somebody say, I'm the same God. The same God. Revelation, revelation. Can I tell you something that I learned? Can I tell y'all something? When you have real revelation, you aren't comfortable until God is comfortable. When you have a real revelation and understanding, you can't get settled where you are. All you want to do is get closer and closer to God. Because I understand that God is not a stagnant God. So when I got that revelation, I understand that if he's not sitting still, I don't need to sit still. He's calling me closer every day. Every morning I wake up, he says, come a little bit closer. Every step I take, he says, just take another step. Every time that I open my eyes, he's calling me higher and higher. I got a revelation. I got a revelation. Revelation doesn't make you comfortable. When God is happy, I'm happy. I'm not pleased until God is pleased. That's what God is looking for in these new, in these last and evil days. He's looking for some people who's going to not be settled for just being popular and relevant. He's looking for some people who's going to look for more revelation. He's looking for some people who's going to dive deep into his word. Because God said, I got some mysteries I want to reveal to you. God said, I got some hidden things that I want to open up and make plain to you. Amen. He says he want to do it like he did the disciples. He was walking with them all that time. He said, all of a sudden, he just opened their eyes. Anybody want their eyes to be open? Anybody want to see God like he sees himself? Amen. And we need a revelation. We need a revelation. Amen. The 12 struggled with grasping the concept of who Jesus was. Even while they were walking with him. Amen. If we look in John chapter 14. Amen. We can see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We can see that when he was with the disciples. Amen. The, the apostle, the disciple, Philip, came to him and said, Lord, Lord, show us the Father. Show us the Father. He said, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices us. Just show us the man you've been talking about. Just show us this father. You keep saying father, my father. Show us, show us. We're looking for somebody to come down from glory and part the clouds and be this great, big, majestic person. Hey, Amen. That's why Israel missed out on them because they were expecting the wrong thing. Hey, Amen. Jesus said, if, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Hey, Amen. So Philip struggled. Philip struggled with knowing who Jesus was, even though he walked with him. Amen. That's why it takes revelation. It takes God to reveal to you who he is. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, amen, he made his way to the disciples after he had been crucified. Amen. He was crucified and he was put in a borrowed tomb. Amen. And while he was in that tomb, amen, he ascended up to heaven. Amen. And Mary came to the tomb to do her usual checkup and make sure that Jesus was still there. Amen. And when she got there, it says the stone was rolled away. The stone was rolled away. So when Mary stood there, she stood there weeping. She was crying and crying. Amen. And two men appeared and they, one of them sat at the head. One of them sat at the foot. They appeared and they were angels. Amen. And they said, why are you weeping? They said, why are you weeping, Mary? They said, woman, why weepest thou? She said unto him, because they have taken away the Lord. They have taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. Hallelujah, she said, they take him, and I don't know what they did with him. Amen, so she was standing there crying, and they were trying to comfort her. Amen, and then all of a sudden, Jesus showed up. All of a sudden, he showed up as a stranger. She didn't see him as what he was at first, but she saw him as a stranger. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can go from person to person for help and try to get comfort and try to get peace, but in all actuality, all you need to do is come face to face with Jesus. All she needed to do was see God for herself. Amen, the angels couldn't comfort her. 
Amen. Amen. It couldn't comfort even when he appeared as a stranger. She did not find peace, but when she saw Jesus, she stopped all her weeping. He said, oh, just stop weeping. Stop weeping. Amen. Because he knew that if he had not died, there would not have been power in the blood. He knew that if he had not died, there would not have been a salvation. Amen. So he told her to stop weeping. Stop weeping. Amen. He told her to stop weeping. And the Bible says that she turned herself. But you can't see him until you stop focusing on what the problem is. She was focused on that he was not there. Then she didn't stop to think that he said I was going to be raised from the dead. She didn't stop to think that in three days he said I was going to build this temple back up. She was so busy focused on the problem. Focused on the situation. Focused on what was wrong. And focused on what she thought. Amen. Was going wrong. Amen. Her Savior was not there. Amen. I encourage you all on today. Stop focusing on the things that are so little and just focus on Jesus. I guarantee that things will get a lot easier if you stop looking down at the problem and look up to the hill from which coming your help. And all your help is going to come from the Lord. Stop looking at it for what it is and look at it for what God wants it to be. We got to start focusing on Jesus. Focus. Focus on Jesus. Amen. She turned herself. She turned herself. So she turned herself and she looked at Jesus. Amen. And all her tears were dry. If you can't, just look at the person next to you and say, stop crying. Stop crying. Stop crying. Because that same Jesus that laid himself down on that fiery tomb, on it, in that fiery tomb, is the same God that rose with all the power in his hand. Stop crying. Stop weeping. Amen. It's power now in the blood. Stop crying. It's power now in the name of Jesus. Stop crying. Stop weeping. Stop saying you can't help it. Stop saying there is no hope. Stop saying it's all looking bad and it's all going downhill. But look to the man that says, stop crying to Mary. Look to the man that says, stop weeping. Because I'm that same man that died. And I'm raised and I rose again with all power in my hand. Somebody say, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, he was making his way. He was making his way. Amen. To all the disciples, because he knew they needed to see him to confirm the prophecy that he would be raised from the dead. Amen. And in verse 24, verse 24, amen, we see, we see that it says, amen, verse 24, but Thomas, Thomas was not there when the rest of the disciples saw Jesus. He said, Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Amen. He was not with them. He was not with them. Amen. Thomas, he should have took the other people's advice. He should have took the other disciples' advice. Amen. But he needed an experience of his own. Thomas said, I will not believe unless I can touch the nail prints in his hand. He told him, I will not believe if I can just reach and touch him and feel him. That's the only way that I believe. Thomas said, I can't just take y'all word for it. I can't just take y'all testimony. I know you might have seen him, but all I need is to touch him myself. I got to feel the nail prints in his hand. I got to feel the holes in his side. I can't keep taking y'all's word for it. I need an experience for myself. Thomas knew that with an experience, it would be impossible to doubt God. The reason some of us got so many doubts is because we have not had an experience with God. The reason we keep getting troubled and turmoil over every little situation is because you haven't had a good experience with him. I dare you to just have an experience with God one time. That trouble won't seem so big. That problem won't seem so heavy. That burden won't seem so burdensome. I dare you to have an experience with God. Do I got any Thomases in the place saying, Lord, if I can just touch you one more time, I believe you. Lord, if I can just reach and touch you, I'll be made whole. Somebody say hallelujah. Certain people, amen, to certain people that we always witness to. They've had enough work but what they are missing is an experience. Thomas waited eight days on Jesus to ascend. He was sitting back and he waited eight days, day after day, day after day. He waited and he waited on the Savior to return just so he can get that touch. But can I tell y'all something on today? We don't have to wait any longer. You don't got to wait till tomorrow. You don't got to wait till the next hour. I know you can just get on your feet and say, Lord, I need to touch you. I dare you to stand on your feet and say, Lord, I need a fresh touch. Lord, I need a fresh word. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Lord, I need a touch. So Thomas waited. He waited those eight days. And finally, the G 
Jesus that we know decided to walk in the room. Jesus didn't come for everybody else. He said, I'm coming for Thomas. Amen. He moved them all out the way. Amen. That's what I love about God. He'll move some people out the way just so we can get with you. He'll move the enemy out of the way just so we can touch you and let them know that he's real in your life. He'll move all the obstacles out of the way just so we can get to you. He's there for the backslider. He said, I'll leave the 99 and come find one. Amen. He said, I'll come to you. I'll do whatever it takes just so you can believe me. Say, Lord, make me a believer. Make me a believer. Make me a believer. When he finally showed up, he didn't show up like he did when the rest of them saw him. Thomas got a special experience. He told him not to touch me. But when he got to Thomas, he said, now you can touch me. Because I got all power. He said, you can lay your hands on me because I got all power in my hands. Anybody know Jesus got all power? He's got all power in heaven, all power in earth, all power above, all power beneath, all power, all power. Somebody say all power, 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 all power,
Lord, you took that too. He did more than I even expected him to do. I came to him seeking for the Holy Ghost. And God cleansed me from everything that I had in my life. Somebody tell God, thank you. Somebody tell God, glory. We ain't gonna do it seated. Above this, above all that we can ask or think. Above anything that we can even ask or think. It's something that you can't even wrap your mind around. But if I had a few disciples in this place, if I had a few saints and prayer people in this place, they would say, Lord, give me a mind to ask. Give me a mind to ask for what I don't think about right now. Give me a desire to see you in your manifested glory. Give me a heart to see you more than I am now. I need your power. I need your strength, God. Give me the ability to get up to where I am and come closer to you. I need a touch from you, God. If you give me a touch, I know I'll be made whole. He asked the disciples, who touched me? I'm the one. He asked the disciples, who touched me? I'm the one. Do anybody, can anybody say it today? But I'm the one that touched Jesus. I'm the one that touched him. Hallelujah, Jesus. The next time you're out on your job and somebody complains about a problem they have and some sin that they can't seem to shake, I dare you to tell them to say, just touch Jesus. The next time they tell you, but you don't know, just touch Jesus. You don't understand, just touch Jesus. You don't know what I'm going through, just touch Jesus. You don't know the situation, just touch Jesus. Is there anything, is there anything too hard for our God? Just touch Jesus. When you touch God, he'll touch you. He won't let you touch him alone. But when you reach for him, he'll reach for you. He said, draw now, and he'll draw now to you. When he touched you, he put his fingerprints all over so the day that he touched you, that's the day you start looking like him. That's the day you start walking like him. That's the day you start talking like him. And they ask you why you're doing things you do. Because like, God's hand is all over me. The last time I touched him, he put his fingerprints all over me. So that's how I identify with him. If you want to know why I do what I do, just know that God touched me. And he made me brand new. Somebody say hallelujah. What I love about God is he's big enough that all of us can get a touch. We don't have to get in a single file line like they were when he was walking the earth. He said all of us can come. Come all ye that labor and I have a labor and I'll give you rest even rest for your souls. He's calling all men to repentance. He's not calling one at a time but he's calling all men to repentance. All men to repentance. He's not like the statue Buddha where you gotta wait in line to touch him. He's not like those pagan gods and those idols that they're worshiping, that they're trying to put their hands on, and they gotta wait on a certain time. God says, anytime you come to me, you can serve me. Anytime you come to me, you can praise me. Anytime you come to me, I'm available. Anybody in here want to touch God? Anybody in here want to touch God? Anybody want a fresh touch from God? Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I touched him. I touched him. I touched him. I touched him. Oh, man, when I touched him, I touched him, he touched me back. And I touched him, he made things different. Nothing was the same since I touched him. Everything changed. Everything was different since I touched him. Everything was different since I touched him. Man, he touched him. He touched him. I touched him. Man, we all can just stand on our feet on today. You want somebody to just lift their hands and say, Lord, I want to touch you. I want to touch you so I can have a new mind. I want to touch you so I can have a new heart. I want to touch you, God. I want to touch you. I want to feel the prints in your side, God. I want to feel the prints in your hand, God. I need to touch you. I need to touch you. I need to touch you. I need to touch you, God. Send some virtue from your body. Send some virtue from heaven. Oh God, when I touch you, when I touch you, I know I'll be made whole. Hallelujah, Jesus.